Hello. <laughs> My name is Trisha Burke, and I am the VP of Production Operations at Diligent. So what is Diligent all about? What do we spend our time on? Believe it or not, many companies are still using email to communicate with their board of directors, sending confidential information all over the internet. And we all know how secure email is these days. <laughs> So we, as a company, are dedicated to providing a secure and effective way for directors to communicate. We are dedicated to providing a, a board communication experience that all directors want to use. Whether it's our board portal product, our instant messenger solution, or entity management product, we're trying to give directors ways to communicate in every way that they feel is necessary. While we've always had that customer focus, the way we were delivering our software was a little out of focus. And ironically, communications was our biggest problem. The main culprit was our old process. We had teams in different geographic locations. We were doing about four monolithic releases a year. The developers would write the code, QA would test it, they would create a build, and then they would throw it over the wall to the operations team. Does that sound familiar? And that's where the communications would break down. Sometimes the operations team would get a release, and they wouldn't know what to do with it. Sometimes they would know what to do with the release, and it wouldn't work. Needless to say, this created a lot of tension between the teams. So we did what I'm guessing many of you would do in the same scenario. We scheduled meetings. We talked a lot. <laughs> we talked about releases that were coming. We talked about things that weren't working in production and what we were going to do to fix them. And this helped. But it wasn't enough. Part of the problem was that we would get a release to put into production, and people would know that the release wasn't ready. They would know that there was problems, but they would never tell anyone because, hey, we have to hit our release dates, right? As Torsten mentioned earlier, we needed to establish trust between the teams. So the next step was we brought the teams together in one place. We got them hanging out together. We helped them to build a rapport. We wanted them to be able to call somebody on the phone if they had a question and feel like they knew who that person was on the other line. And that helped. But what we realized as we went through that process was that we were really missing a piece of the puzzle. We needed a team that was just focused on the releases. So we created a release engineering team. This was a group of folks that were very, very familiar with the development process and understood what the developers were doing, but they were experienced operations folks. And they were totally dedicated to the idea of DevOps. They would get involved in the release process very early, work with the development team, and then help to bridge the gap between development and operations. Of course, it took a lot of communications to help everybody to understand that this new team was here to help them produce higher quality software and get it out to market faster. Now we were ready to introduce Puppet into the process. Our first step was to unravel some configuration scripts that we had written over the years. We had a homegrown configuration tool that we were using to help us release our application. And we would have to run that tool in every development environment and every test environment. And then when we went to production, we would have to deploy it in eight data centers. And if something didn't work, we were combing through logs and looking at servers and trying to identify what the problems were. So we decided to take a few components of the application and rewrite it as puppet code. The whole process took us about two months. Well, it actually took us about two weeks to write the puppet code, and then it took us six weeks to convince the development and the QA teams that it was OK for us to release that code and that it was actually going to work. 
When we started this whole process, our CTO was very much behind the changes that we were making. He understood that we needed to find a better way to get our software to market. All of the management team got together. We all talked about it. Lots of meetings. <laughs> but the reality was, when we got to the point where we were ready to make the change, people weren't ready for it. They were really worried that the changes were going to impact our releases. And in the end, when you work for a software company, delivering your software is the main reason that you're there. <laughs> if you can't do that, then you really have a problem. So we got together the business stakeholders, and we started talking to them about continuous delivery. We talked to them about how continuous delivery was a better way for us to release our software. We talked, about develop, we talked about DevOps and how all software companies were having the same kinds of problems that we were having, and that DevOps was the de facto way of solving them. The big shift for us, when we really got everyone on the same page, was when we had a Greenfield project. We decided to do this project using Puppet and DevOps from beginning to end. We were started doing releases every two weeks. And suddenly, everybody realized this was actually going to work. <laughs> Fast forward to today. We have basically spent the last year, more than a year, 18 months. We finished our main, puppetizing our main product. And we've taken on three greenfield projects in addition to that. We ended up maxing out the whole release engineering team. And now we're trying to figure out what is the best makeup of that team? How do, we best, how do we best organize that team so that we are, don't have people running around with their hair on fire, but we also don't have people sitting around idle? We need to figure this out pretty fast at Diligent. Uh, in the last year and a half, we've purchased five companies. Each of these companies has their own set of tools, processes, communications challenges. As we talk to them, we're starting trying to establish trust. We're talking about their delivery pipelines, and we find that some of them have fantastic pipelines. They're totally bought into the DevOps idea. They're, they're contributing ideas and ways that we can move forward. And others are doing the same monolithic releases that, that started our problems. <laughs> when I tell these folks that we're doing more than 50 releases a year, they practically fall out of their chairs. I tell them to take it slow. Use the DevOps and Puppet approach that we've used. Start to get your team moving forward with automation and try to double the number of releases you're doing every year until you can release it well. My takeaways for you today are the following. Create an environment in which people feel comfortable speaking their minds. Establish a group of people who will champion DevOps within your organization. Over-communicate with everyone about why this is a good idea and why this is going to make their lives better. Use a Greenfield project with DevOps and Puppet to get your first win and show everybody what they can, what they can accomplish. And then brace yourselves, because a whole flood of work is coming your way. Thank you. <laughs>